everyone and welcome back to Wound Care Wednesdays. My name is Lori. I am a family nurse practitioner and I do wound care as a specialty in the nursing home settings. Today we're going to talk all about arterial insufficiency ulcers. Those annoying ulcers that you normally tend to see on your patient's lower extremities and if you ask the patient how long they've had those ulcers they'll tell you they have them for years or they come and they go because arterial insufficiency ulcers tend to wax and wean. They will pop up and then they'll go away and they'll treat them and they come right back so let's dive right into all about arterial insufficiency ulcers so these ulcers are caused by decrease in arterial blood supplies hence the term insufficiency there's not enough blood flow going on the patients tend to get these ulcerations that are a pain and when I say pain I mean a pain to heal and to close in fact I had one patient for the two years that I have been working with my boss I was treating his arterial insufficiency ulcers. I heal them, then a month later, the wound care nurse will say they're back. So what causes arterial insufficiency? Trauma, diabetes, acute embolisms, even rheumatoid arthritis can cause arterial insufficiency. But the number one cause of arterial insufficiency is a term known as atherosclerosis. Basically, what is atherosclerosis? It is the thickening of of the arterial walls. So it begins when cholesterol is deposited on blood vessels. Another thing that you see with patient that that has arterial insufficiency ulcers are the fact that they have cholesterol issues. So what are some of the signs that you tend to see with arterial insufficiency? One of the first signs of art arterial insufficiency is pretty much intermittent claudication. And this is when patient tells you that they have having cramping, burning pain in their lower legs. The pain tend to go away one to five minutes after they have rested. So let's talk a little bit about the risk factors that we tend to see with patients who develop these arterial insufficiency leading to these ulcerations. Number one, smoking. So what does nicotine do? Nicotine pretty much restrict your veins. So it's called, it causes vasoconstriction and that means there's no more blood supply that is going into that area. So smoking is definitely one of those risk factors that people can modify. It's what we call a modifiable risk factor, but we know a smoking addiction. I have never smoked, but I know when you're addicted to something and it's just hard to give up but if your patients can give up and try to cut down on their smoking this is one of those risk, fa risk factors that we should encourage our patients not to do the next risk factor is high cholesterol hypertension advanced age a lot of people don't realize that with advanced age comes a lot of problems it's true <laughs> it is absolutely true so with advanced age we tend to see the rate of the arterial insufficiency increase with how older the patients get. So one of the first things that I do as the nurse practitioner with the wound care team, anytime there is a new patient that comes into the building and they tell me that the patient has ulcers on their legs, especially like the posterior, the lateral, if you see a lot of ulceration or darkened areas on the toes, I always suspect that the patient has some form of arterial insufficiency, especially if the patient has discoloration to the lower extremity like venous stasis a lot of times you'll see that in patients so the patient is showing some sign that they have some form of occlusion or insufficiency going on and sometimes you ask your patients and they will tell you no I've never been told that so one of the things that I do as a practitioner this is how I typically assess the patients first thing is first you want to check the patient's pulses this is a quick easy thing to do you want to check the femoral pulse the popliteal pulse the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibial arteries you want to check all those pulses and sometimes if you cannot palpate it you cannot feel it you want to ask for a doppler but let's be honest these nursing home ain't got no doppler so the next thing i do is order a doppler ultrasound and this is when in the nursing home setting we will have somebody come in and do the doppler ultrasound on the patients and once i order the doppler ultrasound to see the blood flow i always add what is called a abi abi is an ankle brachial index anytime you do your abi on a patient and the numbers are lower the numbers are on the lower side this is a huge significance of potentially how the wound is going to heal and how long it's going to take that wound to heal. So let's talk a little bit about the characteristics of your arterial 
ulcers. The characteristics include pain position, presentation, peri wound, pulses, and temperature. A lot of patients will tell you a lot of times that I have so much pain in my legs, I don't know why I have all this pain in my legs. So the pain tend to sometimes increase with activity and elevation. And a lot of times this pain is masked by diabetic neuropathy. Because remember I said, diabetes is a risk factor of getting um, arterial insufficiency. So where do you normally tend to see the pain? The pain is almost always below the knee. It's it's t it tend to never be above the knee when the patient complain about pain. Most commonly, the toes, the malleolus, your malleolus is your ankle, as well as the anterior leg. What does these wounds normally present themselves as? How does the wound normally tend to look with a patient that has arterial insufficiency? They tend to always, always start off as very small wounds and then they get bigger over time. A lot of times you'll see dark discoloration on the tip of the toes and then sometimes the wound is really small and then the next week you come back and it looks like there's necrotic tissue that is now covering the entire area. Let's talk about the limbs. The lower limbs tend to look pale, dusky, or cyanotic. So pay attention to how the lower limbs look when you are monitoring patients for any form of insufficiency changes. When we talk about the pulses, dorsalis pedis pulses, tend to be absent or hard for you to palpate. Also, the tibial pulses are tend to be absent, not there. The temperature of the legs. So the temperature of the legs are normally what? If there's ischemia there, they are going to be cool, cold to touch and cool. So you always want to kind of palpate the patient's body temperature and then compare to the temperature in the feet. So how do I normally treat these wounds when I see them? I did a video about treating ulcers and it pretty much depends on what it looks like. The dressings that we typically use on different type of wounds, there is no box that says this dressing or this treatment is for pressure ulcer and this is for arterial ulcer. There's no such thing as that. It just depending what the wound bed look like, what's going on with it, and that's how you make your decision of treating the ulcer. I just make sure that I assess the wound bed and what's going on with it and then make my decision based on that. Let's talk a little bit about interventions. A lot of time when I go to nursing home setting and patients have swelling in their legs, nurses want to put those compression socks on the patients or a strap on the patients and a straps as well as compression socks are not something that you really want to do for these patients. Also, patients insufficiency will be so severe then I sometimes find patient get gangrene so if you suspect that there's any gangrenous tissue that is there you want to definitely send your patients to the hospital um, I think I had a patient once and you know they refused to do anything surgical for the patient but then after a while it developed into gangrenous tissue and at that time the patient had to be transferred to the hospital and in cases like this a lot of times patients can lose their limb from the gangrenous tissue that is going on not all the times but you will find that happening some of the times if you're suspecting infection or anything like that increased drainage odor and it's progressively getting worse you do want to do wound cultures you want to do x-rays bone scan things like that so that's it I think that I have covered all of the top points that you need to know when you're trying to assess your patients for arterial insufficiency and those annoying, annoying ulcerations on your patient's lower extremities that take so long to heal. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And next wound care, we will talk venous insufficiency. Bye guys.